when I was diagnosed the first time, I was like, oh, I'm 32, I'm too young. You know, you handle it how you need to handle it. And it's okay to feel all the feelings and it's okay to say all the bad words if you need to. It's okay, you know, to respond in, in a really authentic way. Um, when you're diagnosed with a metastatic breast cancer at, an, at a younger age, uh, it feels that uh, you do not have time for this disease. Uh, you're dealing with your career, um, you're dealing with family or trying to start a family. Sometimes you're dating. You know, when, when they tell you that cancer is all over your body and you don't know what your life expect expectancy is and that there's a 5% chance that you're gonna live past three years and that meant not seeing my 40th birthday and that meant not seeing my two youngest children get out of elementary school, I wasn't okay with that. We're gonna be realistic. My future is now. You know, even if I live a day or if I live a year or if I live 10 years, I am still acting that my future is now because of my diagnosis. Relationships change a lot for the good and then some for the worst. So you kind of get both. When you live a normal life, everything stays status quo up until the moment you start telling people that you have cancer. And I just turned 26, so it was right after my 25th birthday when I got diagnosed. You are dealing with, with Having young children, a lot of times you're dealing with having to work full time a lot of times. When I was re-diagnosed at stage four, he was three years old. He had just turned three. And he does not know any other life than his mom being sick. But I've always gone into it with the idea that my son is still entitled to his childhood and he's still entitled to a mother who gives him everything that she possibly can. So I really try to not let it impact his life, even though he's having to deal with it just as much as I am. This disease comes and uh, takes over your life and uh, you have to kind of uh, think about things that uh, people typically do later in life. Um, for example, I had to retire. You have to find a team, an oncology team that you trust, that you feel respects your opinions. Um, you know, that's that's why I chose my team. It really helps when you have a voice, when you feel like you're being heard, when you feel like you're being listened to. And so there's always ways to find that information. It isn't always easy, but it's worth the effort. Once you find the right team, it is a huge stress relief. And somebody that listens and gets to know you a little bit uh, that way, you can work together. It, it's, I know it sounds like, oh yeah, a team working together, but with metastatic breast cancer, uh, I, I do not see it, how you can just sit and do the regular disease. Uh, okay, do this and you're done. No, you have to work together and figure things, things out. But I've had people ask me, what did you do to get yourself where you're at right now? And I said, I just told them I'm not giving up. So if you're gonna give up, I'm gonna find somebody else. And my doctor said, I'm not giving up on you. The common narrative is, is the happy, pretty pink breast cancer patient, you know, waving her pink ribbons and her pom-poms in her air. And, the, and we're not, that's not the truth. That's not the reality. So many people say, well, it's so rare, rare in young women. And I tell people all the time, well, it doesn't really matter what age you are, if you have a history, or if you're a male or female, it can happen to anyone at any age. But I just wish people knew more about it than October, that a lot of people think that breast cancer is an easy cancer to have. I did. When my aunt got ovarian, I asked God that I wish she got breast cancer, because it seems like that would be so much easier on her. It's not. I remember when I finished treatment for, for my early stage cancer, um, my doctor did mention there's this 20 to 30% that you may have a recurrence, but he did not go 
into the details of what this recurrence could be, into you co it could become metastatic, and uh, I think that that's important, um, especially for younger women, to know that the risk of a recurrence or metastasis is there, and, uh, and what does it mean? Learn and educate yourself on your diagnosis. Um, every breast cancer is different. You, know, you have to try everything. Find a trial, find someone. If your doctor isn't willing to work with you, get on the phone and find people that can help you. You have to write your own story. Um, because this treatment worked for, for someone, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. So that's why education is uh, so important. Um, to know that you're writing your own story, there's no book. It's okay if everything doesn't go perfectly and you just have to learn to roll and, and accept that and, and go on. And it's not a big deal and nobody expects you to be perfect. But don't be afraid to say what you need. Don't be afraid to say what you're feeling. There are going to be days where you feel awful or you're moody and you're cranky or you're angry because I, I've had more angry days than I've had sad days. Because at the end, you know, at the end of the day, it's not fair. It's not fair that any of us are having to go through this, but it's not fair and it's okay to say that.